55. From Hollywood, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen. And the NBC Orchestra inviting you to join Johnny and his guests, Bess Armstrong, Dom Herrera, and 13-year-old violin virtuoso, Corey Sarovchek. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny. Simmer down, or we're going to have a test. <laughs> Friday night audience, thank yeah. you very... That's very nice of you. By the question first, did you all get the uh, nougat-filled chocolate eggs we left on your seats? <laughs> <laughs> You're in a good mood. By the way, as you probably know, the show is free, but uh, tipping of the host is allowed after the show. <laughs> Woo! Hey, Daddy, how's yeah, it going? Baby! Look at the pig pants, right? Yeah, man. Little something the old Easter bunny there. Oh, that's nice. Real nice. Goes with a goes with a shawl back of you there. Very nice. <laughs> Great color contrast. I'll wear that later. <laughs> okay, we're gonna this this should be fun. You don't have to participate, but if you do, when I count to three, want ever everyone to stand up, turn around, drop their pants. <laughs> We're going to send Gaddafi a moonogram. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'll tell you. I, I hate to see this spring break vacation come to an end. We've been getting audiences here that have been sensational. Now, a lot of you are still on break, I guess, yeah! from the holidays. Okay, now, I'll tell you what. The truth now. How many of you cashed in your return airline ticket to buy a leather bathing suit at Frederick's of Hollywood? <laughs> Only way you get home now is to go on Wheel of Fortune on Hope of Sand. <laughs> California, if you haven't been here before, is kind of laid back, you know. Chino State Prison gets a spring break. Did you know that? <laughs> I'm looking to forward to an exciting weekend. Huh? Taking my leaf blower up down to tune-up masters. Just to... I knew that was going to get nothing. Nothing. <laughs> what? You were right. I was right. You got nothing. Strange thing happened to me. Tell us about it. I will. All right. <laughs> Just before the show tonight, I was out in the hall. Sweet little old lady comes up to me. You know, kind of bluish hair. <laughs> she says, you know, you're... Your monologue reminds me of the Easter holiday. And I said, because it's a joyous experience? And she said, no, because it's one egg after another. <laughs> well, we started off so great. <laughs> Did you see what Muammar, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi said today, according to CBS News? He said that Libya had won the encounter with the American Navy. Because not one American ship crossed his so-called line of death. He claims it a victory. Then I heard today that NBC is doing a new series about the Libyan Navy called Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. <laughs> a lot of hot spots in the world. Libya, Salvador, Nicaragua. Reagan just sent in the troops to quell the spring break in Fort Lauderdale. It's getting bad. <laughs> The president, I guess, is on an official... They don't call this a working holiday. This is an 11-day Easter vacation, and he's up on the uh, ranch in Santa Barbara. 
He likes to, you know what he likes to do out there? Chop wood and clear brush. <laughs> and occasionally he calls all the video stores to see how Hellcats of the Navy is uh, renting out. <laughs> Well, that, that didn't work either, did it? <laughs> now, as soon as, soon as uh, Reagan left the Oval Office, Bush rushed right into the office, picked up the phone, called Gaddafi and said, don't start anything during my 11-day regime. <laughs> Maybe if I went back and started over. <laughs> you want to hear some good news? This is the best news I have heard in a long time. According to a paper, New York Times, I think, of many dentists, dentists are going out of business. Do you know why? Because people aren't getting the number of cavities they used to have, thanks to fluoride and, I guess, dental floss and so forth. Dentists, what a shame. <laughs> That's the worst news I've heard since the Gestapo disbanded. <laughs> but anyway, tonight, here's a good news. We've got a... Does that all, ever cut off circulation to your feet? I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. You're really tied up there. Anyway, you're in a good mood. We've got a good show later on. You announced who we have. Dr. Ruth Westheimer. No. <laughs> we'll be out here to tell us that a woman is the best sexual aid. <laughs> That's it. So anyway, we have Bess Armstrong. We have a lovely actress, Bess Armstrong. We have a new comedian, Don Herrera, with us tonight, and uh, a mag uh, marvelous young violinist. He is rather incredible. He is 13 years old. His name is Corey Sorovchek, and he will be with us, so stay where you are. We'll be over. <laughs> I'm Ed McMahon. It gives me great pleasure to announce American Family's fourth million dollar prize winner, Mrs. Amy Bell of North Carolina. Now, how does it feel to be guaranteed one million dollars? I guess we'll live a whole lot better. Maybe I'll come for dinner. Okay, listen, you could be next. Grand prize, ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. So watch for the sweepstakes with my picture. It could make you super rich. To understand what people are talking about, try a refreshing Seagram's wine cooler. <laughs> The generosity of the Hawaiian people never ceases to amaze me. They actually give away Mauna Loa macadamia nuts as gifts. Personally, I find them almost too good to share. Delicately crunchy, subtly exotic, irresistible. I make a gift of Mauna Loa macadamias. For me. Thank you, John. The idea does have merit. Give Mauna Loa macadamias the gift that's almost too good to share. The 18th Duke proved that you can indeed take it with you, leaving the 19th Duke no option but to open the summer residence to the public. Good morning. Nevertheless, we serve only Schweppes ginger ale here. Real Jamaican ginger, Schweppes essence. As refreshing as a dip in the royal pool. Geronimo! Geronimo. We are back. Yeah. Oh. You know we gotta we gotta see if we can get a continuous spring break Wouldn't all during the year. Yeah. yeah. Every night this week. Every night's been great this week. Okay, we got a good show. We have Bess Armstrong, uh, Don Herrera, new comedian, and Corey Sorovchek. Excuse, excuse me? Dom. Dom, what did Dom. I say? Don. Oh, it's dumb. Dumb. Dumb, da dum dum. <laughs> Rather interesting thing here. We gotta, we gotta check out. What, let's do it. I'm going to. 
I got a, uh, a notification from the United States Department of Labor Employment Standard Administration Wage and Hour Division. Now, you, wow. know, you know it's official when they have a title like, like, that. like that. You know what it says about child labor? No. Would you like to hear it? I certainly well, would. Well, you're going to. You must be at least 16 years old to work in most non-farm jobs. Were you aware of that? No. In most non-farm jobs. No. Bobby, I'm talking to my director. Yeah, John. Is that, are you familiar with that, child labor? Yeah, I read the same thing. Yeah. We have any problem with that? No, not oh. up here. <laughs> How long have we been talking back and forth? Over 20 years? 20 years, yeah. Yeah. Nobody ever sees our control room. No. Take a, would you like to see our control? Take a shot yeah. of our control room. <laughs> I'll show you. And meet, 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 our, uh, meet our director, Bobby Quinn. There's Bobby. <laughs> And our uh, associate director, Jim Cantrell. And there's our technical director, Gene Schwartz. Thought you might like to meet some of the guys behind the scenes. They, they do all the work up there. <laughs> I'll get my kid a job. <laughs> they look kind of young to me. <laughs> you know, here's, there's a loophole in this, though. I'll oh. point out. There's a loophole in the Department of Labor and Regulations. And it says, and I quote, you must be at least 16 years old to work in most non-farm jobs. Different rules apply to agricultural employment. Uh -huh. So maybe the wardrobe department could uh, possibly help us out. We'll take a look and find out. <laughs> yeah, there they are. There we are. Now oh, we're all set now. Now they're official farm workers. Okay, I think <laughs> that covers us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, Kevin leaving, is he? I think he's uh, scouring. Scouring, all right. Can we find Bob? The reason I mention this is because that is part of our crew. One of the guys who has been on The Tonight Show since we moved to California. Hmm? Am I, am I hearing an echo? Yes, no. Someone's talking. Kevin leaves. Someone... Anyway, a gentleman <laughs> who's been with The Tonight Show since we came out here. Um, we came out in 72. He started at NBC in 1950. Can you imagine working for NBC wow. for 36 years? And he's been in our video control department, and he is, uh, he is retiring. We thought you might like, this is for real. The kids, of course, were a joke. <laughs> I don't want you to think this is, his name is Bob Patterson. Bob, come in here. Sure. Uh, you gonna do it? <laughs> Sit down a second. You really gonna do it? Yep. You're gonna quit, huh? Yep. You gonna be magic? The huh? This is the most exciting day in my life, coming up and sitting in front here after I've been up there making That's right. the picture you, all these years. You've been making all the pictures, and here you are. So what are you going to do? Have you figured yeah. out uh... A lot of nothing. A lot of nothing? Yes, for a while. 36 years. Yes. Now, you didn't know about this, because the crew wanted me to give you this. But this is a card signed, and they put it in real plastic. <laughs> wow we so This is the Bob Woofy Doofy Patterson. Where'd that come from? I have no idea. Well, I don't... I don't it says, best wishes on your retirement from all your friends at NBC, April 1986. And we have all signed that, including myself and all the cast and crew. And we uh, would like you to have that. Well, that's fantastic. Got to remember. Thank you, very thank you. Much. Have a happy retirement. Thank you very much. Okay, Bob. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Now, nice man. We had 36 years, we retire. I didn't want them to think that. That was a joke also. Yeah. You know, he brings somebody in who's not retiring and is made up. Uh, I've been talking about being here on spring break, right? right. We get audiences at this time of year, and especially on holidays, more so than usual. But as in most television shows, people write in for tickets uh, in advance. They come here. A lot of people come to shows, will stand in line with a ticket, and sometimes not get into the show yeah. because that many people show up. And... Uh, Usually there's what we call a standby line or an overflow for this show, and I guess most, most shows that people want to get into. So we felt a little uncomfortable with that, that people would spend all that time and not have any yeah. entertainment. So we thought we would inaugurate perhaps a new feature, and we'll see how it works tonight. And that is that we're going to entertain them. They are outstanding in the standby line, and we have hired an act to perform. While they're, look, they should have something, right? Sure. Uh, so we're going to cut out there now, and then I'm going to go out and, and meet the gentleman who is now entertaining the people. This is for real. 
in the standby line in front of NBC. Let's switch out there now. There we are. I'm sorry you couldn't all get in tonight, but I want you to meet Mr. Entertainment, Sal DeMarco. He was voted Mr. Entertainment at the intersection of Olive and Alameda. <laughs> Sal, how's, how are things going out here? Man, Dyke, this is Love City. Yeah? People love my they love your stuff, huh? Oh. Okay, are you going to take requests? I sure do. I take lots of requests. All right, if you have any requests for the next hour, Sal will do it, right? right. What, what are you going to start off with? I've been working for months on this latest jingle, and I think you'll really like it. Okay, Sal, go ahead. We'll start, and we'll come back and see you later. Thank you. Okay, kick it off. Here it is. All right, thank you, sir. Oh, feelings. Nothing more than feelings. You do, be you do that better than Nothing Imelda Marcos. Than <laughs> They're in my heart. Okay, we'll be back and check on Sal later. Feelings. Today's small cars are tougher than ever on oil. Their high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the only leading motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. Hershey Bar, one of the old-time greats. Hershey! Hershey! Hey, 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 Hershey! When you want pure milk chocolate, with or without almonds, nothing but a Hershey Bar will do. Hey, 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 Hershey! Hershey! One of the old-time greats. won't stop ringing. Tuesday. Mac! When it touches my face, it hangs up. Aww. I don't have a problem. You've got a problem. Lots of people with phones not made by AT&T are registering some kind of complaint. When was the last time you had a complaint with an AT&T phone? Hello? What? Can you call me back on an AT&T phone? You get what you pay for. AT&T, the right choice. It's Intruder, Chrome on Chrome, stepped up seat, the twin soul, but he don't care, he's got no doubt, it's Suzuki Man, let it all hang out. Hey! Sound of the Fury, slung down low, lean and mean, he's on the roll, but he don't care, he's got no doubt, liquid cool, let it all hang out. The 1986 Intruder, Suzuki Man, Suzuki Machine. Let it all hang out. Okay, we are back. So, uh, we have a wild standby crowd out in front of the building there. Yes, they're having fun. Anyway, we'll check with uh, Mr. Showbiz, uh, Sal DeMarco, later and see how things are going out there. Uh, you're, in, you're in for tree tonight. I heard this young man rehearsing this afternoon, and he, he is remarkable. The guys in the band were just sitting there rather uh, astounded. He is the youngest student ever admitted to Indiana University. And at the age of 13, he is considered by many to be an incredible talent. And he's going to be accompanied tonight by his sister, who is equally gifted. Uh, her name is Katya. She's playing the piano. And his name is Corey Sarovchek. Would you welcome Corey and Katya Sarovchek?